Well, g'day curd nerds. Today, we're going to be making kefili. Well, kefili has Welsh origins. Uh, traditionally, it was made in Wales or sold in Wales. And it is a very simple cheese to make. It's in the cheddar style, it's in the cheddar family, I would say, but it only takes three weeks to mature. Um, this has been maturing for about five weeks. Um, and if you, have a wa if you had watched the previous video, you would have seen me shave the kefili. Very interesting video, so go and check that out. Anyway, let's get on and see how we made kefili. So firstly, I sanitise all my equipment by boiling all the stainless steel equipment, including the cheesecloth that is required later on in the process. So I steam those for about 15 minutes. Then all the other equipment that I can't boil, I spray liberally with white vinegar, and that kills off any moulds or yeasts. So the milk I'm using today is Inglenook Dairy's full cream, unhomogenised milk. It's about... 4% uh, fat. So the ingredients for this cheese is 10 litres or 10.5 quarts of unhomogenized cow's milk but it has been pasteurized. An eighth of a teaspoon of MA4001 mesophilic starter culture and uh, that's made by Choose It. Uh, an eighth of a teaspoon of MO30 mesophilic or any mesophilic with those two strains of bacteria in them an eighth of a teaspoon of calcium chloride, one teaspoon or five millilitres of single strength rennet, and two tablespoons of cheese salt, plus more salt for later on. So whisk in the cream if there's any floating to the top. Give that a good whisk. And then we measure out the rest of the ingredients. So I'm measuring out the calcium chloride there. And then the teaspoon of liquid rennet. This is single strength rennet. It's about an IMCU of about 200. Okay, so that's all ready to go. So I've heated the milk up to 32 degrees Celsius, 90 Fahrenheit, roughly. Yep, close enough, I think. So now we're going to add the calcium chloride. This adds in soluble calcium back into any heat-treated milk, especially pasteurised milk. Give that a good stir. This helps the curd set much, much better with using pasteurised milk. So next we're going to add the starter cultures to the surface of the milk. So I'm adding the plain mesophilic there. You can use MO30. I'm using a Mad Millie mesophilic sachet, same cultures. Now I'm going to use the uh, Choose It MA4001 uh, starter culture to sprinkle that over the top. I'm deviating a little bit from my normal kefili recipe. I wanted to get an extra cheddary flavour, that's why I'm using the MA4001. Now we're going to allow it to rehydrate for five minutes before we stir it into the milk. So five minutes later, we stir the cultures into the milk. Using a top to bottom motion so it distributes evenly through. Temperature's risen up a little bit to 32.5 Celsius, that's okay still. Now I'm going to take that off the heat, I don't want it to get any warmer, but we're going to cover that, allow it to ripen for 30 minutes or acidify. So 30 minutes later, I put it back onto the steamer, 
Let's check the temperature there. It went down a little bit during that 30 minutes, so that's okay. So we're going to add the rennet now. And the rennet is going to coagulate the milk and let, allow us to separate it into curds and whey. So stir, stir for no more than one minute. And I'm going to cover that and allow it to set for 40 minutes. Now just remember when we add the calcium chloride and the rennet, they must be diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water for them to work effectively. So we're going to check for a clean break after that 40 minutes. Now this is probably double the amount of rennet I would normally use, but it's required for this recipe. However, it hasn't set as well as I think it should. So I'm going to leave it for 10 minutes. Pop the lid back on. check again. Yeah, it's a much firmer set. Big thumbs up. So we're going to cut the curds into 1.25 or half inch cubes. Just doing the horizontal cuts there with my trusty curd harp and then using the curd knife I'll do the, the vertical cuts. Try and get them as evenly as possible. So the cube sizes are consistent throughout the cut. Do your best. Uh, so then we go the other way, perpendicular to the first set of cuts. And there we go. So cover that and we're going to allow the curds to heal now for five minutes so it makes it easier to stir. So five minutes later, you can see a fair bit of whey has been expelled. So we're just going to gently, gently <laughs> lift and separate those curds and just cut any large ones that you see as you stir it. They didn't quite make the cut. Okay, so we're going to stir for 40 minutes whilst increasing the temperature up to 33 Celsius, 91.4 Fahrenheit. So there we go, 40 minutes on the clock and start stirring. So gently stirring, don't need to rush it or anything like that. You can see that the curds have shrunk a fair bit there. And we have indeed got very close to 30 3 Celsius, 32.8, that'll do. So they're about the size of a peanut, the curd cubes that is. Right, so we're going to allow the curds to settle to the bottom for five minutes, just makes it easier when we drain the curds in a second. So over to the sink area with our cheesecloth lined colander. I'm going to drain the curds through the cheesecloth and we're, re we're reserving the whey because we're going to use that to heat the curds during the cheddaring process. Right, so that's enough whey. Put that back on the stove and then we're going to just drain the rest. There's not much whey in that at all. There we go. All the curds are out. We're going to allow those to drain for five minutes. I was just gently pressing those down then. So five minutes later it's shrunk down a little bit in the cheesecloth. And we're going to take it out of the cheesecloth now. Just flipping it out and leaving it in the colander. 
and just give a firm press there so it forms into a slab. So we're going to allow this to drain now for five minutes. Just putting the lid on so no beasties get in there. Okay. So heat the whey on the stove to 33 Celsius or 91 Fahrenheit. Place a colander on top and then we're going to cut the curds into 5 centimetre or 2 inch slabs and stack them on top of each other. This just lets the um, curds drain a little bit and uh, aids in forming the texture of the kafili. So we're going to drain that for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes later they shrunk a bit there. And we're going to restack them and drain for another 10 minutes. Just place them on top of each other. The ones on the bottom put on the top. There we go, best you can. And another 10 minutes on the timer. So then take it over to the sink area. And using the pot that we used before, just uh, with clean hands, we're going to break the curds into thumbnail sized pieces and place them into the pot. So I'm breaking up each of the big curd uh, fingers, I suppose, or slabs, using my thumb as a ruler and just breaking them up. So they'll be a little bit chunky in the pot once you've broken them up. Nearly done, there we go, all done. Quick wash of the hands. And now we're going to add salt to the curds. And we're gonna mill that through. Milling just simply means to mix it through. So it was two tablespoons of salt. We're just putting that in there. Didn't quite have enough, so I put a little bit more in. There we go. Just a smidgen. And then just gently mix that with your hands. There we go. Looking good. So with your cheesecloth lined basket, I'm using a a six inch basket across the top there, 165 millimeters, and just place all the curds into the mold or basket. Okay, all done. So we're going to cover the curds with the cloth. Just pull it down a little bit at the side so there's no creases in the cheese. Just put the cloth over the top, follow on top, and press it at 5 kilograms or 11 pounds for 10 minutes. Okay, so after 10 minutes has elapsed, we're going to remove the cheese from the press. Now it will be just formed at this stage, so just be gentle. Now an extra step in making kefili is to uh, salt the cheese top and bottom. So just sprinkle a little bit of cheese on, oh, sorry, cheese, <laughs> cheese salt uh, over the top. As long as you're using non-iodized salt, any salt will really do. The iodine kills the starter cultures, so try and avoid that. And then just a sprinkle over the top and then give that a little bit of a rub. There we go. And we're going to bundle that back up and put it into the basket. Cover it with the cloth, put the follower on top and then repress at 5 kilograms or 11 pounds for 10 minutes again. Okay, so remove the cheese from the press again. Now it'll be a bit firmer, so just salt the top and bottom again. There we 
go. Wrap it up. Pop it in the basket. Cover it with the cloth. And follow up. And we're going to press a little bit firmer this time. 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for 20 minutes. Now all these little pressing steps help the cheese to press evenly. You won't get a wonky looking cheese. Okay, so we're going to remove it from the press for the last pressing. Once again, I'm going to salt top and bottom. Now this extra salting, what this does is it helps firm the rind up very quickly uh, and expels any excess whey. So Kefili is traditionally known for, and we'll get back to that in a sec, but cover the cheese with the cloth and press at 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for 16 hours. Yeah, Kefili normally has a very firm rind and a fairly soft centre. So that's what the extra salt's for. Okay, so the next day for me, take it out of the press. Okay, so it should be fully formed and it may have a little bit of a edge at the top depending on the mould you're using. I found that I needed to trim a little bit off there. So trim it off any excess with a clean knife. And then air dry for about three days or until touch dry. So I turned it about every six hours during air drying. And then mature in a ripening box at 13 Celsius or 55 Fahrenheit for three weeks and turn it twice a week. And there's the finished cheese in all its glory. A lovely, fantastically creamy kefili. Anyway, back to Gav. So you can see that was a fairly simple process. I simply kept it in a ripening box for the three weeks. I turned it every week, once a week. Um, but uh, in my case, this normally grows fairly vigorous mould um, if you don't wash it down with brine every week. So I highly recommend you wash it down, wash in down, wash the cheese with a simple brine solution, which is basically a tablespoon of salt in a cup of water uh, or 250 millilitres of cool boiled water and then wash the cheese all over and do that probably once a week. That'll keep the moulds at bay. This looks pretty good. Um, it's got a little bit of fluorescent yellow on it, um, which I washed out, but uh, that's okay. No big deal. And uh, that looks good enough to eat. So nice and clean now after I've uh, done the final wash and actually got, uh, there was some vigorous white mould on, so I just scraped that off. And it hasn't affected the rind of the cheese at all, which is fantastic. So the proofs and the pudding. So let's cut into the cheese and see what it tastes like. Here we go. Well, the rind's fairly good. I won't say it's soft, but just right, I think, for a kefili. Let's have a look. A little bit of cracking in it, but that's normal for kefili, um, I find, and I've found that before. So nice. Oh, oh, the smell is just beautiful. It's got that. Oh, it's, it's the paste is a little bit soft. Um, but that could have been from the white mould that was all over it, but it's not soft in, in so much as it's like camembert. But you can see there, a little bit of uh, development, eye development, uh, which is normal for this and for the cultures that I use for this cheese. But yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. Smells amazing. So let me just cut it into quarters. Perfect. I've got a big tower of cheese now. now. Let me just cut a slice off. A little bit crumbly, but kefili is known to be crumbly. Let's just cut that off. So this is the 10 litre recipe, which is a little bit bigger than the original one that I ever made. So let's, oh nice. Still very moist in the middle, uh, so that's good. Let's just give it a go. Mmm. It's salty. 
creamy. Oh, this is delightful. Just how I remember it. Mm. Now I know why I recommend this cheese. For beginners, because really the cheddaring process was very simple. Um, the age, you know, the aging of the cheese is very simple. Even when it's really gnarly, the mould on it, it just tastes amazing. It's all that salting during the uh, pressing process. Mm. Inside of the cheese is very nice. Um, the rind, a little bit nutty, which is good. Oh, that is outstanding. Honestly, one of the best cheeses on the channel, Kefili. And I recommend it to so many people as a beginner's cheese. Absolutely delightful. Oh. Oh, I can't stop eating. It's beautiful. For a semi-hard cheese, this is just amazing. No bitter aftertaste. Oh, perfect. Creamy, rich. A little bit nutty on the edges. Mmm. Oh, very nice. So this is going to be, I'll just uh, fix that up with the tea towel. This is going to be our Christmas cheese. Um, so this, it's a week before Christmas when I shot this. So it will be amazing. Um, so I'm really looking forward to sharing this with um, family and friends um, over the Christmas break. Absolutely delightful cheese, Kefili. You can make it. You won't be able to make it before Christmas, but you'll be able to make it uh, uh, for the first week of the new year if you make it now. So give Kefili a go. Well worth it uh, and delightful. And I'm looking forward to one of Kim's special dishes that she makes, which is Anglesey eggs, um, which has Kefili as the feature cheese within an absolute delightful. It'll be an amazing meal. Anyway. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds. If you want to buy the kit to make this, I recommend the hard cheese kit. Uh, I think we've got some in stock on the website. Give that a go. Um, but otherwise, all the supplies, ingredients are over there at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Well, thanks for watching, as always, Curd Nerds, and I will see you next time.